This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning. Welcome to this time of worship. And welcome to Southminster Presbyterian Church. As we gather in today, this is the sixth Sunday of Easter and our tenth Sunday apart from one another here on the hill. As we gather in this morning, just note that we have a few things that are happening this next week as the office continues to uh, open up a little bit more. Please, please make sure that you're getting the emails from Betsy each day and we can keep in contact with you of all the fun things that are happening around the church. As we continue to figure out how we're going to move forward, we will continue to have a presence online, a video uh, service each Sunday throughout the summer, no matter what decisions are made in the future. As we continue through this summertime, remember that we have each day, a Wednesday, uh, each morning at nine o'clock, a Bible study led by George Van Kirk and his friends. Please join them. It is a wonderful time to gather together on Zoom. We also have Wednesday night uh, reflections and series uh, as we hear from the different agencies and the different groups of how they are uh, coping and modeling for us uh, ministries during this time where we are absent from one another. We also have a special message today from our session. And now as we continue our announcements, we have a message from Mark Ezekiel. Good morning, Southminster family. We would all like things to go back to normal so that we could resume our regular worship services, Sunday school classes, and other church functions. We are all feeling social distancing fatigue. Unfortunately, even though public restrictions have eased, we have not seen significant decreases in positive cases or hospitalizations due to COVID since we made the difficult decision to move to online worship. We have, so far, helped prevent the type of horrific spread experienced by other cities, but we know that we continue to have community spread. Since a major part of our congregation is considered to be in a high-risk category, we do not feel that it is prudent at this time to begin meeting in person. In order to be good community neighbors, it is important that we are not seen as disregarding the best advice of our medical professionals and scientists. So, as bad as we all want to get together, we need to continue to worship together from home a little longer. Let's give our healthcare professionals a chance to improve testing, to perform contact tracing, and to work on a cure or vaccine. We know that this is not welcome news in difficult times. If you are struggling with being at home or with the current situation in general, please reach out to Tom Betsy, or Robert. They would love to talk to you. Thank you and blessings. Thank you, Mark. Let us pray. Lord, as we gather in together, silence in us the voices that are around us that would distract from worship. Call us into a renewed intimacy with you, O God as we seek to serve, and as we seek to worship. Let this be a time where we grow as we continue to be called as disciples of Jesus Christ. Bless us in this time of worship. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Would you please join me to the call to worship found printed in your worship bulletin. Come to worship people of God with praises on your lips. Even when we are feeling isolated and fearful, we can glorify the one who holds our hands in our loneliness. Come into the presence of the one who makes holy every place, every space holy and sacred. Even when we continue to stay safe in our homes, the doors of grace are flung wide open for us. Come and hear the stories of the ones who love you. 
In living rooms, on laptops and devices, we will sing our songs and tell those tales of the peace of the hope which is living in ours. What is our hope? Simply put, just that God has not abandoned us. With such good news, we can dare to bring our prayers to the one who will not cast aside our words or our hearts. Please join me as we pray together, saying, Immortal, Invisible, God only wise. We sing these great proclamations, but we confess at times we do not sing with our hearts. At times our words fall short and meaningless. We do not follow your way and commandments, but seek proof and evidence. We fail to step aside to see the poor and the needy around us and continue on our own narrow way, helping only ourselves and failing to seek your wisdom and insight. Forgive us of our foolish ways and guide us to the right paths. Remember your wisdom and grace so that we might fill our hearts and sing with the joy that comes with knowing you in our lives. In the name of Christ, our companion on life's journey, we pray. Despite everything we do, God loves us. This is grace, pure and simple. This is grace when everything says we should not, we can dare to hope. We will witness th to this grace with every breath we take and with every gift we offer, with every word we share with others. Thanks be to God, we are forgiven. Amen. You have been forgiven and set at peace with God. Friends, that is a peace that we don't keep to ourselves. It's a peace that you can give. Today, as we pass the peace, we will be led by our children who are going to teach us something about passing the peace. The peace of Christ be with you. Peace of Christ be with you from outer space. And also with you. And also with you. Peace be with you, superheroes. And also with you. Okay, say it now, Evan. And also with you. Louder. And also with you. Peace be with you, my friends. Also. And also with you. And also with you. And also if you to infinity and beyond. Peace.
Peace be with you, friends. And also be with you. And also with you, my friend. Peace of Christ be with you, friends. And also with you, my friend. Peace of Christ be with you, church family. Be well. Peace of Christ be with you, church family. Peace of Christ be with you, South Master. Let us pray for illumination. Lord of wondrous light and power, we come to you this day to learn of your will for our lives. Heal our wounds, lift our spirits, give us courage and confidence to boldly serve you in all that we do. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to John. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the Word cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have been my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now it's time for the children. I've got something I want to show you today. It's a drumstick. And it's just one drumstick. It's the only drumstick I have, but it's a special drumstick. This drumstick was my grandfather's. He used to play the drums. He had a drum set. I remember having, he had a drum set set up in his living room and he would play along to records. 
Uh, he was a really good drummer. But my grandfather's no longer alive. But my, this drumstick is one of a few things that I have of his that remind me of him. So when I'm missing him, you know, I can get out this drumstick or look at this drumstick, and I can think of my grandfather. Well, our story today is a lot like that. Uh, Jesus was talking to his disciples right before he died, and he was telling them that he's not going to be with them all the time, but he will send a special helper to the disciples, and that special helper is the Holy Spirit. And what's cool about that story is Jesus was not only talking to the disciples, he was talking to us too. That Holy Spirit is with us now every day, and it's how we experience God. So even though Jesus is not here on earth for us to meet and shake his hand, we have the Holy Spirit that we can see, and we can see and know God through the Holy Spirit. And, and we can show that Holy Spirit to other people. So be thinking this week as you're going along, be looking for signs of the Holy Spirit. Where do you see God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit at work in our world? And then how can you show that Spirit, show other people what Jesus was like? Thanks for joining me today, and let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you so much for bringing Jesus into this world to show us how to live and how to love you. We also thank you that even though we did not live in the time of Jesus, we can still know what you and Jesus are like by your gift of the Holy Spirit. Help us to see the Holy Spirit in all of our lives every day and to show the Holy Spirit to other people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our second reading today comes from the 23rd Psalm. Hear now these words. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, for you are our rock and our redeemer. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Our first reading today from John's Gospel, read by Brooke this morning, immediately follows our text from last Sunday, where Jesus is comforting the fears of the disciples that they're having concerning the future. He has given them the commandment to love one another, and he has professed that he is the way and the truth and the life. And while a week has passed since we have read those words together, Jesus has only but taken a breath before he makes this next great promise to his friends. The promise is, you will never be alone. In the way, in the truth, and in the life, you will never be blind, stumbling into a dark world without me. Jesus' first promise is that there is a plan, there is a purpose. God is at work in the world, no matter how chaotic that it will be for them. But the second promise here is that they will never be in the chaotic world alone, by themselves, trying to do it apart from Jesus. Here in John's Gospel, we have something that is rather unique 
Even in all of the Gospels and all of Scripture, Jesus speaks of the Holy Spirit in a different way. A different way than it is described anywhere else. Over the next three chapters, Jesus will use a word only four times. And it is the only four times that that word is used in the entire Bible. It is a bit of a strange word. One that is mysterious and it is complicated. And yet, somehow, that is just perfect as we think about the strangely elusive and shyest of the three persons of God in the Trinity. The word for Holy Spirit here is paraclete. Paraclete. Some Bibles will translate this as the spirit of truth. I believe that's what we have in our NRSV that Brooke used this morning. But some will call the paraclete the comforter. Others will call the Holy Spirit here the counselor. Some will call it the advocate and others the helper. And some scripture readings over the many years have decided just to leave it as it is in the mystery of the Greek. Strangely and vaguely just leaving it there as paraclete in the middle of our English translation. And others, others still do not like all of that mystery and just call it the Holy Spirit. Many years ago when I was in Greek school, the Reverend Dr. David Bartlett, who taught me Greek, said that the paraclete is the name so full of mystery and meaning that no English translation has ever captured it fully. And because it cannot be contained, he said, each translation describes only a part of its meaning. But most of all, he taught us that for John, the paraclete is God's welcome, God's acceptance, God bringing us home. It is the contrast to being left orphaned. The theologian Raymond Brown takes a stab at this word in his commentary when he says that John presents the paraclete as the Holy Spirit in a special role, as the personal presence of Christ with us in relationship while Christ is in the presence of God. He says the paraclete is the promise of Jesus present in absence. Present in absence. That is the best phrase to capture Jesus' promise to his friends around the table that night. Present in absence is a contradiction of words that is almost impossible for our minds to consider or to reconcile. I have known the glow and the warmth of presence. I have tasted the bitterness of absence. But the paraclete is where these two collide, where presence overwhelms and washes through the moments and the seasons of absence. It is before absence turns to loneliness. It is God's presence when grief loosens its grip in our hearts. It is the concrete certainty that the sun will always rise. Our present day does not offer us much presence. Our homes, our places of work, even our times of worship are characterized by what is missing, by what is absent. And for many, this is a lonely time. Even if we were in a crowded place, we would still feel all on our own. 
either behind a mask or a shield or a distancing. A few weeks ago, sensing that this feeling was not unique to her, Jill Lepore, a history professor at Harvard, penned an article for the New Yorker called The History of Loneliness. In it, she describes loneliness as grief distended. She wrote that we are hungry as a people for intimacy, and we will certainly wither without it. Jesus looks around the table to see a church that will surely wither without intimacy. The intimacy the disciples now know around the table with Jesus as their leader is the same that we glimpse in the Christmas clarion, Emmanuel, God intimate with us. Jesus celebrates the intimacy of presence at the table, and he knows that, that presence will be broken upon the cross. And yet something more is coming into the world, something that cannot be separated or parsed, something that cannot be encapsulated into one single phrase. God with us, to know us, to rupture loneliness to breach grief even as a body is broken we walk through valleys of brokenness as the psalmist will say or we have tasted the bitterness of that lack of presence and intimacy in our own time as we claim in our own hearts and minds the paraclete however is here warming us in unexpected ways, always finding, reconciling, and recreating us, even our tears into balm for our souls. The best words I have found so far for the paraclete have been perhaps captured in the hymn called Spirit of God by George Crowley, when he says, I ask no dream. No prophet ecstasy, no sudden rending of the veil of clay, no angel visited, no opening of skies, but take the dimness of my soul away. Paraclete is God removing the dimness of our soul in an intimacy that is promised in Jesus Christ. So if you are lonely today, if you are feeling the weight of social distancing, and if you have lost intimacy in a very cruel and hurtful way, Christ's promise is yours, even in the brokenness of a body. And the presence of Christ is sure, as sure as an open tomb on Easter morning to be the comfort and the strength that we need, to be the help that we need, to be God's welcome and acceptance in God's home that we need, especially in this time. I invite you in the intimacy of God to reach out with the great promise of Christ and the hope that we have Reach out even to each other and share this promise of a paraclete, the mystery of God made known within us. Reach out and take hold of this unique intimacy that God loves you. And in that, our love is perfected and freely given out into a world that we may listen to Christ we may heed his call and we may keep his commandment and intimacy given to us that we can reach out to others. Friends, today in the mystery of the Holy Spirit, I invite you to reach out past the loneliness and the isolation of our present time, feeling that same promise that Christ gave to the disciples so long ago. God bless you and keep you this day and every day. Amen.
Let us pray. Center us now, God, in the intimacy of your presence in this place, even as we are distant from one another. We lift up our hearts to you, our souls in your presence. We lift up our prayers this day. So we've often failed to be obedient in your will and not always followed your love. Help us to express the love and the intimacy of Jesus Christ in our lives. Open us to your spirit as it urges us to awaken in new ways, to reach out to those who are around us in a changing and hurting world. Today we pray for all of those who need your care. And ask that you would make us instruments of healing and peace and redemption. We pray especially for those who are nearest to us. Today especially we pray for Tom Carey as he will undergo surgery tomorrow morning at St. Vincent. We ask for continued care and comfort in the recovery of Thomas Creekmore from surgery this past week. We ask you to be with Jan McElroy as she is at home. We pray for peace and comfort. Continue to be with Tom Winter as he begins his chemotherapy treatment. And be especially with the Christian's family and the loss of Nan Roy. God, reveal your presence to them and to us as we live into the intimacy of what it is to be God's chosen. May we be the vessels of love and patience and kindness and peace that everyone that we meet will sense within us the intimacy of God. As we pray this day the prayer that Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please join me as we affirm our faith today using a portion of the brief statement of faith. What is it that we believe? We trust in God, the Holy Spirit, everywhere, the giver and renewer of life. The Spirit justifies us by grace through faith, sets us free to accept ourselves and to love God and neighbor, and binds us together with all believers in the one body of Christ, the Church. The same Spirit who inspired the prophets and apostles rules our faith and life in Christ through Scripture, engages us through the word proclaimed, claims us in the waters of baptism, feeds us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation, and calls women and men to all ministries of the church. In a broken and fearful world, the Spirit gives us courage to pray without ceasing, to witness among all peoples to Christ the Lord, and to work with others for justice, freedom, and peace. In gratitude to God, empowered by the Spirit, we strive to serve Christ in our daily task and to live holy and joyful lives, even as we watch for God's new heaven and new earth in praying, Come, Lord Jesus.
We need intimacy, and without it, we wither. God knows this, and in Jesus Christ, God with us, we are loved. We are cared for. We have the intimacy of God here with us. Friends, go now, knowing that you are in the very presence of God, even when we feel most absent. Go in the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, the three in one, this day and forevermore. And all God's people said, Hallelujah. Amen.